Hello everyone, this is a World Exposure. This video is in response to the Dark Matter 2525 video titled Creationist Fail Again. Now in his video he talks about the amazing recent discoveries from the Kepler mission where the Kepler telescope that was launched almost two years ago has discovered 54 planets that are in habitable zones of their solar system. Now given the title Creationist Fail Again, he uses the recent Kepler discoveries in his video to try to shoot down a false belief that he himself has given to all creationists that we all believe that the entire universe was created just for us. Now with all of his celestial music and echo edited voice, let's hear what Dark Matter 2525 has to say. spot for life, known as the Goldilocks Zone. Too close to the sun and we cook. Too far from the sun and we freeze. The Earth had to have been placed in its precise orbit by an intelligent force in order to make our lives possible. Creationists have been saying that for years. As of February 2nd, 2011, they can never say that again. On March 6, 2009, scientists put the Kepler Space Telescope in orbit, and in just half its mission time, an infinitesimal glimpse into the sky, it found 1,235 planets, 54 of which are in the habitable zones of their stars. Five of them are the same size as Earth. The Kepler telescope only surveys one four hundredth of the sky, and it only examines a tiny fraction of the millions of stars in that section of sky. If it could see the whole sky, it would see over 400,000 planets, and that's just in our neighborhood of the galaxy. The Milky Way has 400 billion stars. The fastest vehicle ever built by human beings would take 4 billion years to cross it. Well, first of all, you use animation of the space shuttle flying across the galaxy when the space shuttle is an orbiter and only orbits the Earth at that speed. You can't just fly it through space like a rocket, but I see your point. However, these are Earth-sized planet, not Earth-like planets. And although the information that the Kepler mission has gathered so far is amazing, Kepler has not yet found any Earth-like planets orbiting a sun that is the same size as our sun. It has only found Earth-sized planets, and Venus, Earth's sister planet, is about the same size as Earth. 100,000 years at light speed. That amount of time encompasses all of human history. Just a small glimpse into a tiny fraction of our galaxy revealed over a thousand worlds. With so many planets out there, it's not surprising that we'd find many of them in habitable areas. We've been trying to tell creationists that this is probably the case, but they just didn't listen. And now, thanks to Kepler, we've been vindicated. Yet this doesn't even scratch the surface. There are 100 billion galaxies in our universe, separated by vast oceans of space. What does that mean? It means that your mind cannot comprehend the sheer number of Earths that... Again, there's no evidence of any other Earths out there, so how can Dark Matter 2525 say for certain that there's an incomprehensible number of them? And since so many planets that we have discovered are different, what would cause Earth-like planets, or any habitable planets for that matter, to be just like another one in our universe? Why wouldn't the difference of each individual planet in our universe be just as great as the quantity of planets in our universe? They're out there. Still feel like it was all put here just for you? Well, I don't know if it was all just put here for us or not. But you are correct, it was put here, as were your Kepler planets. And if those planets are indeed occupied, then wouldn't it have all been put here for its occupants as well? And now, in deep space, 
astronomers are finding immensely powerful gravitational forces that they theorize could be caused by other universes. Our universe could be just another speck in a galaxy of universes, and so on and so forth. Look, this theory is nothing new. Stephen Hawking said in his book, The Grand Design, that the Big Bang was created as an inevitable consequence by the laws of physics of multiple universes. But what created all that? The planets that we consider uninhabitable are uninhabitable to life as we know it on our planet. As vast as space is, couldn't some of those planets we consider uninhabitable be habitable to different life that we are unfamiliar with? I mean, look, the Kepler discoveries is a huge story, and I think it's a shame that the media is not covering its historical findings. However, using its findings to try to burst the creationist bubble, you are haphazardly rushing into conclusions that the Kepler mission itself is not even discovered. If there are other habitable Earth-like planets out there orbiting a sun the same size as ours, it will take more time to get that information. You're not discouraging any creationist in your video but just preaching to your atheist choir. Alas, as usual, the atheists seem to have the answer to everything while scientists are still searching. Now, we all know that the holy grail of the Kepler mission is the discovery of an Earth-sized planet orbiting in the habitable zone of a star like our own sun. And believe me, no one is more eager to get to that point than the Kepler team. However, that's going to take time. As I've said, Kepler's only been in operation for about a year and a half, and it'll require at least three years of Kepler data, as well as uh, painstaking observations from some of the world's largest ground-based telescopes before those types of planets are going to begin to emerge from the data.